Hi, welcome. It's been a while. So today we're going to talk about how to make the donut game that you're seeing right now. I made this for a video on my main channel, Exceptional 3D. And today I'm going to make it on this uh, channel for tutorials. So let's do it step by step and explain my process of how I did it. Uh, I'm not actually going to do the finishing game with all the score things and the colours and whatnot. I'm just going to do the raw mechanics and the basic concept and then you can figure out all the all the uh, artistic styles that you want to go with. So first of all we need a donut that I have right here. I downloaded it on the internet, link in the description if I can find it again. And uh, what we're going to do is add physics to it because that's the main part of the game. You can emulate this with a uh, downwards force that you can program but it's better to use physics because it gives you more control and uh, it's just easier to use and it has more realistic effects than just the downwards force. We can now add a mesh collision object and set this to be a weight of 10 uh, because we don't want it to be paper thin and just like fly everywhere. So now what we want to do here in the uh, armory properties in this drop down we can actually go ahead and set these top two to be zero. Now what these represent is basically the movement of the X, Y and Z. So over here we set it to zero on the X and Y so the object over here on the X cannot move like this with physics and it cannot move like this. So when it calculates physics the, these two X and uh, Y angles will be locked off. However on the Z it's set to 1 so we can move it up and down which is perfect for our flappy sort of mechanic. So once we have this make sure you add continuous collision detection uh, which is basically just going to make sure it doesn't accidentally uh, forget to calculate the physics if it's like really fast. Uh, this is used for stuff like bullets and whatnot. This isn't necessary but it will just give us better results just in case. Now let's go ahead and add a script to be able to move the actual object. So let's go to the object data tab and in the army traits, let's add a new node tree. Let's set this to be called jump. Make sure the first letter is a capital letter. If not, army won't like it. And uh, let's go ahead and select the script. Now I'm currently working in the scripting tab just because I found it to be a good workspace. You can access the logic node editor by clicking on this icon, logic node editor, or press uh, shift F3 and it will, it will open it up. So uh, let's go ahead and start work. So let's add an input to be able to trigger the impulse that we're going to add to the donut. So let's set this to be started because if we leave it on down then as long as our finger is on the button, as long as it's pressed down it's going to repeat the action. Uh, but we don't want to do that. Uh, we're going to set it to space and let's duplicate it and set it to up arrow up up over there we also want a mouse input this not only emulates the mouse it not only allows you to click to apply uh, to, uh, action, uh, to start the action but it also emulates Android or mobile devices I mean not Android uh, so if you click on the mobile device the uh, mouse is basically the same thing. Mouse left is the same thing as a mobile touch. So now what we want to do is add a merge node because we want to merge all these inputs into a same action. We want to map them to the same action. So let's plug all these into a same into the merge node and they're all going to have the same output. Uh, go to physics and go to apply impulse and plug that in. Now the reason we added a rigid body is because it needs uh, rigid physics to fall but also applying an impulse isn't possible without the RB rigid body. So now I can um, drop the donut and uh, as I said X Y Z and we want to imply an impulse on a positive Z which is upwards negative Z would be downwards uh, and so let's set this to be 100. Because we set our weight so high, we set it to 10 uh, kilograms, I think. Yeah, 10 kilograms, we're going to add an impulse of 100. And that should emulate a quite a heavy object. Okay, now what we want to do is add a way for the donut to die. Because we can just click and now it, uh, it moves, but we have no way to kill it. But before that, let's just set up the camera. Let's press 0 on our numpad and open up the side panel view, camera to view, 
and grab a good sort of angle. Okay, that seems pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and add a cylinder. Okay, RX, RY, 90, GZ, and let's set the scale to be quite small actually, something like that. And we're going to want to move it down quite a bit because as soon as we start the game, currently it's just going to start falling, the donut. So we want the cylinder to be not right at the top because if not, we won't have any time to react. We want it to be set pretty low down, but not too low down either. And now we can scale this one out. Okay. Set it just outside the frame, just for aesthetics. Okay, now that we have this, we can actually apply uh, some variation in the pole, in the tube. So let's actually just reduce the size a little bit, like that. E to extrude, GZ, E, GZ, E, you get the drift. Okay, we're not going to make it too long for this tutorial. Now what we want to do is add physics to this one as well to detect, but we don't want this one to actually fall. So we're going to set it to passive. We're going to set it to mesh because we have a quite a complicated mesh going on here. And uh, we don't need to bother about this. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to go to the script, to the army traits, add a new node tree, call it def. And let's go to the def, uh, the def node trait and add a uh, physics on contact node so this is basically a non it is a non collision node so it's going to detect when the donut let's eye drop it is colliding with the cylinder and if they are make sure it's overlapping because uh, at the begin is the same thing it's, it's going to detect if they're colliding but overlapping is making sure they're well overlapping begin is when it's just slightly colliding with it and uh what I just found overlap to work better because it gives a little bit more time so it doesn't add false positives. Okay, now we can go ahead and apply an action. So the action in question is going to uh, remove the object. But in this case, I decided just to restart the scene. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to scene, get scene active, scene again and set scene oh no that's not the right one set scene active and this is going to reload the scene it's going to set the scene active the current scene so it's going to reboot it and there we go now what we want to do is just add one last node just for uh, usability and that is uh setting the uh, game to be able to exit it so let's go shut down no shut down yeah there we go now when, when escape is pressed, we can shut down the game. And this is just so if you're on full screen, you don't have to try and get out full screen. If you export the game in full screen. That's besides the point. Okay, let's get back to the point. We want to move the actual object towards the player because currently the player does not move upwards. So let's add an on update node. Let's go to logic on update. And this is going to occur every frame. So in our case, it will probably be 60 frames per second. So every uh, on update, we're going to translate the object. So let's add a translate node. We're going to translate the object in which direction? In the X negative. So minus X and X, Y, Z. X is the first one. So we're going to set it to zero po minus 0 0.060. Uh, we can eye drop it as well, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, because it's going to default to it anyway because it's the object with the script applied to it. So now we have this set up, we can just do one final thing and that is just add some lighting. So let's just go and add some <laughs> bright light and set a material to the actual object, the um, cylinder, to be able to distinguish it from the background. Okay, now let's go ahead and play this game. I'm going to save the file and play the game. And there we go, that is the entire game. The rest is just uh, aesthetics and lighting and whatnot. It's quite hard actually. You can mess with the actual physics to get a decent looking result. But this is your own rage game that you can't get more than a 
second into... Ah, oh, that was close. So yeah, that is the core mechanics of my game. I had no other code apart from that. Uh, I did actually use a score system, but that's pretty easy to implement. I've talked about it a lot on this channel. And uh, this is where I'm going to leave the video because I think this is pretty much it. With this, you can uh, set off on your journey to make your very own Flappy Donut ripoff. So thank you for watching and make sure you go check out the video on my main channel. I put a lot of uh, time and dedication into it and I'll see you in a later video.